1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today, uh, we're going to be looking at the book of Philippians. But to understand where we're going with this, you have to know that Paul is trying to give some practical wisdom here. He's trying to give some practical wisdom to uh, those at, at Philippi and, and just trying to give them some idea of how to live like Jesus. Because that's really kind of the crux of this letter, and really, in a, in a sense, every letter that Paul sends. But we all know that sometimes Paul gets a little philosophical, and right now he's just trying to give them some very practical things to do. He's like, here's some things that you need to do in your normal life, some things that you need to practice to be able to live the way that Jesus wants us to live. So we'll go ahead and look, and this is Philippians 2, 14 through 15. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, so that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent children of God, above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world. So if we understand this to be Paul trying to give the Philippians some advice on how they're supposed to live, who they're supposed to be. First of all, we know that we're supposed to do things without grumbling or disputing. That's a hard thing to do sometimes, especially when it comes to something that we may not completely understand in the moment, that maybe we'll do it, but we're going to fuss about it the whole time. Do you really think God wants to see that out of us? Like, if we're going to church, but we're doing it because we feel like we have to, and we don't really want to go, and we'd kind of rather sleep in, or we'd kind of rather catch the NFL game, or whatever it is, whatever's distracting us from that, that we do it with grumbling and disputing, or if we're giving to people or donating some time, volunteering, helping people out, but we're really fussing about it, it's too early or it's too hot out here. If there's one thing that you learn from the children of Israel wandering around in the desert is that God does not like whining. And he's compassionate. He worries about our needs. He worries about things that, that we may want from him. And he tries to listen to our request whenever he can. But ultimately, he doesn't like whiners. And just like a, a real parent, you know, somebody that is having to deal with a difficult child you'd almost rather them just not even do what you tell them to do as opposed to doing it but fussing about it the entire time. That was something that was difficult for me because I know that this is hard to believe, but I tended to argue a lot as a child. <laughs> I know that's a, a shock to everyone, but that really is the way that it was. And so the crux of this is that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent children of God above reproach. Why is that above reproach thing so important? Because God wants us to live in such a way that if anyone were to criticize us, it would be abundantly clear to any fair-minded person that the person that is accusing us of some kind of wrongdoing, they're the ones that are actually in the wrong. You see, God wants his people to have a good reputation with those around him. He understands that you know the world didn't love him, and so it's not going to love us. He understands that there are always going to be scoffers and people that want to tear us down because we follow God. He understands all that, and Paul understands that. Some of our, our best writings to attest to that come from Paul. And this is a man who was persecuted a great deal in his lifetime. But the good people that are fair-minded and are actually looking for the truth, they're going to see that persecution. They're going to see people accuse us of doing nothing wrong, and they are going, that is going to change a person's heart and mind. They're going to look at that and go, this guy's not bothering anyone. This guy's not doing anything wrong. And this actually kind of goes back to the story that we were talking about just a second ago. The guy slashing open the balloon and the people that are flying the balloon. That doesn't change a person's heart and mind. They can see the vitriol, the animosity towards the other side, and they just don't want to be a part of it. A fair-minded, 
open-minded individual would look at somebody like in the 1960s, people marching peacefully and having fire hoses turned on them and still not attacking even when they were being attacked. They look at that and see, there might be something to this Christian thing. Look at the They're not even fighting back. When you have an opportunity to retaliate or to do to an enemy as they've done to you, and you don't, you take a step back, you turn the other cheek, that gets people's attention. That gets people listening to you. That makes people think, there is something about that individual that is different, and I want to learn what it is. Yeah, some of them will go on to agree with you. Some of them will still walk away. But the point is, that gets your foot in the door. Behaving exactly like everybody else expects, retaliating whenever something bad happens to you, that doesn't do any good. And it's the unchristian way to, t to think about it. Jesus didn't even go after the very people that were murdering him while they were doing it. That's the kind of person that can change the world. And it's the kind of person that we should strive to be. If we live a life where we do the best that we can to be above reproach, to where even our accusers that are saying things about us, other people hear it and go, uh, I know that guy and he's not like that. I know that guy and... Say what you want to about him, but he's honest. Say what you want to him about him, but he is dedicated. Say what you want to about him, but he loves his family. He does his job. He's a good man or a good woman. You see, when that happens, people actually do start paying attention to the life that we're living. And that's why Paul ends this by saying, you'll be in the midst of a perverse generation, but you'll appear as lights of the world. See, Paul's not saying do this because... Other people are just, you should live a life above reproach because then everybody will like you. Then everybody will just be accepting of you and you won't have any problems. Paul's not saying that. He's saying this is a wicked and perverse and evil generation. And when people see you acting completely different from them, then all of a sudden you become a light in the world because light shines brightest in the dark. You don't really notice a flashlight when the lights are on. You notice a flashlight when all the lights are out. That's why you have a flashlight. And that's what Christians are supposed to be. We're supposed to be a light in the world that when everybody's surrounded by darkness, they see all this hate, all this vitriol, all this infighting and bickering about nothing. And they see the person standing there and saying, no, this is stupid. And living a life that is truly above reproach, being moral, loving your family, being dedicated and honorable and honest, then all of a sudden the focus turns to you. And that is when we have an opportunity to teach people the gospel of Christ. It worked in Paul's day, it works now. That advice that Paul gave the Philippians 2,000 years ago, it applies to us right now. And if we want to be lights amongst the world, we have to do the best that we can to live a life that is above reproach. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel, but the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.